did not read incorrectly. That title does say Twilight. Nine years. This book has been out for nine years. I have shielded myself. I barely knew anything about this series going in except that it was about vampires and werewolves and some girl and all of the taunting about it. I loved this book. Is it the best book ever written? Obviously not, but oh my goodness, is this entertaining. I guess it doesn't look super impressive without the uh, book jacket. This book is borrowed. From a friend. If you have not read Twilight and you do not want to be spoiled, now is the time to leave. Belle has moved to Forks, Washington to live with her father while her mother goes on the road with her new husband, pursuing a baseball career. Forks is a tiny town after living in Phoenix, and she's starting school in the middle of the semester. My first note for the whole book was everyone is in love with her. Everyone is. Who is it? Tyler, Mike, and What's his name? She meets Edward Cullen. I'm not gonna go super into this because apparently I forgot to take notes. Can't find notes on any of my thoughts about this except that I remember just like absolutely loving knowing that he was a vampire and watching her figure it out. I was so frustrated when he wouldn't come to school because he was hunting or it was sunny for like those several days in a row and Bella's going crazy. I liked the scene when Edward came and saved her when she was shopping in Port Angeles with Jessica for prom dresses and they got separated and Edward comes and saves her from those really scary guys. And after she had been talking to Jacob, she finally made the connection that Edward was a cold one or a vampire and finally they talk about it. Bella admits to secretly dating Edward and there's like that moment because she's talking to Jessica and Edward is saying like just tell her that we're secretly dating if you don't mind that makes things a whole lot easier and I was like yeah of course and she knows that she's gonna get asked about her feelings for him and Edward's like I'll be listening for that one I'm so cute but also not fair that's not fair that he can hear everything everyone and their brother is asking Bella to the dance and Edward says like would you have said no if I had asked you? And she said that she would have said yes, but she would have canceled later and pretend to have a sprained ankle or something. She's saying because she can't dance that it's just dangerous for her to go to dances. And he asked why she would fake it, and she's like, well, I think you would understand. Are you referring to the fact that you can't walk over a flat, stable surface without finding something to trip over? <laughs> this is so true. She trips all the time. I don't understand. I thought she had some sort of, like, real, like, balance issue, but it's just she's just that clumsy. Edward tells Bella that her number is up, like she's supposed to be dead at this point, and he had saved her, and I think it was because of the car, he had saved her from the car, that was the first thing. So like in my understanding she's basically marked for death, so is this why Edward always feels like more than just a protection, like he needs to be near her because he thinks like basically the universe is out to get her. I was a little muddled on that part. Edward is always mentioning these complications and I wasn't exactly sure. I know that one time it was because Jacob was in the area with his dad and he can't be around the tribe and because of the treaty. Sometimes it felt like it was for no reason. Is it because like when her heart speeds up does that make him more aware of her blood? I was very interested in this part like how it was like an issue for him because he seemed to get better as time went along. The meadow scene was one of my favorites and it was not in the movie. I'd never seen the movies before reading these books and my friends now they won't let me watch the movies before I finish reading the books. The meadow scene wasn't in there and that was one of my favorite parts in this book. He comes to pick her up and she's made plans, like she told people she's going to Seattle, and then she said she's not, and she's just gonna stay home, but actually it's so that people don't get suspicious if she doesn't come back, because she can't tell people she's with Edward, because if he kills her, then they'll know it was him. Not exactly an issue you have on every date. Edward shows up and they're wearing matching outfits. He sparkles in the sun. Okay. <laughs> He admits to spying on her while she sleeps. She's perfectly okay with this, by the way. Not creepy at all. When you're reading this book, you get so caught up into it that you don't realize that a lot of the things that happen are really creepy. Just like, weird. So cute when Edward comes and like, stays in her room with her and they just talk. And it's just so adorable. But like, one date and they're in love. That's, that was pretty quick. I mean, it was 300 pages, but that's still pretty quick. I loved piano time. Oh, it was so cute when he's playing her like the lullaby. And then I watched the movie and like you just listen to it over and over because like I love that scene and I love the song. I'm going to learn it on the piano. One of the things I like the most about the book and like the different, like the vampires were their different powers because Edward said that they took their strongest quality from their past life into their vampire life. So like Edward, he can hear people's minds because he had a really good 
sense about people. Back when he was like just a regular human, he could kind of understand their feelings, and now that's like heightened. Alice can see the future, which is really cool. Jasper, he can kind of moderate people's emotions. So I like just imagine like in his past life that he was really good at being a peacemaker or being able to heighten everyone's attention because that's like what he can do now. I thought that was really cool. I was about 400 pages in when I finally learned how to say Carlisle. So far in the book, I've been pronouncing Carlisle's name Carcisly because I thought that's how you said it. Baseball scene was really fun. Charlie was really funny when Bella is leaving to go to Edward's house and he's like, you're gonna play baseball? And she's like, I'm going to be watching baseball. I just, I liked watching the vampires play because they had to wait for a thunderstorm because they're so loud. Like they, when they bat, it's so powerful that it sounds like thunder and they have to wait. So they got all excited when they could play baseball. But then that trio of vampires shows up and the tracker, James, is with them and he gets a whiff of Bella and decides like this is the person he's going to kill next. And that was scary. They have to leave immediately. Bella has to go to Phoenix. Well, that's where they're taking her, taking her back home. Edward can't go with her because the tracker would know that's where Edward's gonna go. So Bella has to go with Jasper and Alice. Alice is seeing this vision of the ballet studio once um, the tracker realizes that Edward and Rosalie had tricked him. Bella used the same words that her mom did to make Charlie let her leave because obviously he's her dad, like he wasn't going to just let her up and leave in late at night and head back to Phoenix, but she had to say that and she didn't want to hurt him. That was a really hard scene to read because you knew like that was like a knife to the heart to him. I really like Charlie's character. I loved how the vampires really just took Bella into their family, except for Rosalie, but that's a different story. The rest of them really just love Bella so much, and I love on page 404 when Jasper, he can like sense what Bella's feeling. He's like, you're wrong, you are worth it, because Bella was like, I'm not worth all this trouble, this is ridiculous, and that was just so sweet, because Jasper's the one who has the hardest time not killing Bella because he's the newest vegetarian. And um, I really liked that scene. And then right after that, it's so funny. This girl does not have to walk anywhere. The vampires just scoop her up and start running. And Alice is like, may I? Well, you're the first one who asked. And they're in the airport. And Bella had already talked on the phone to James, who had her mom. She was having to escape the vampires to go basically trade her life for her mom's. And when she escapes the vampires and gets in the cab to leave and she's like running, she knows she has like five seconds to get out of there. That was, I was reading that just so like, like so anxious. And then her mother was still in Florida. Are you kidding me? James is disgusting. He was saying that he was hoping for a harder game, like hoping she wasn't going to fall for it. He's sick. Because like with the other vampires, you don't, Think of them as disgusting because of how controlled they are and that they don't want to kill people but like you see James and that's like a really scary version of what the vampires can be. She's attacked and James is taking this video because he wants to fight Edward later. He wants Edward to see him kill Bella. <laughs> the Collins catch up and Edward sucks the venom back out of Bella's bloodstream and they were talking about like how much control this takes and that Edward was able to do that. We have three more books. I knew that Bella wasn't going to die, but that was still like a really anxious scene to read. Basically after that we just see Bella in the hospital and Renee is there, her mom. She's wondering like what her cover story is and they tell her that she was in a hotel. Edward had come to get her back because that was the cover story was that she was so mad at Edward because she was falling in love with him and she didn't want to get stuck in the town. That was like what she had said to Charlie. She didn't want to get stuck in Forks. Edward, the story was that he had come after her and she was in a hotel and she fl fell down flights of stairs and out a window. That's how she broke her leg. It was just like it could happen. Like that's something that would happen to me. The epilogue was so cute because they're gonna go to prom. <laughs> Jacob shows up. My whole reaction, anytime Jacob showed up anywhere. It was just, oh, uh, why? Like, this kid was so annoying in this book. He's come to deliver a message from his dad that Bella should break up with her boyfriend, and he's like, I, this is a really weird message, but I'm getting paid to come here and tell you this, so. I was kind of confused because I knew going into this series that Jacob is the werewolf. I mean, if you would have been on the internet five years ago, all you saw was Jacob and Edward. I knew that he was a werewolf, but I didn't realize that he wasn't yet. And we saw that 
he had grown like six inches in a month or something like that. And I was like, oh, he's not a werewolf yet. So this is really interesting. Those legends that he told her, he didn't believe them yet. But obviously Bella isn't going to listen to this because she loves Edward and she wants to become a vampire. Edward really doesn't want to do that to her because of like her soul. It's really sweet, but I was so ready for her to be a vampire at this point. I wanted them to be together. But that's kind of how the book ends. She's still a human. Jacob is still a human. Everything seems okay. The thing I really liked the most about Bella's character was she had this whole thing where she's like, when I make a decision, I stick to it. So now that she's like made the decision to be with Edward, that's the one she's gonna stick with. That's why I was like so sure she was gonna become a vampire in this book because she's just so dead set on it. Oh, and I also really liked her parents. A lot of books we read, especially in YA, the parents aren't really involved. They're not there or a lot of the parents are dead or just the kids at a boarding school, something along those lines. Because for young adults, for like the adventure they go on, a lot of the time the parents aren't involved. So I really liked in this book seeing how much her parents affected her. That was the reason she moved was because she loved her mom and she wanted her mom to have freedom and she didn't want to hurt Charlie and that was such a big part of her life. I really liked that about this story that she had to keep this secret and that was really hard for her. I give Twilight a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I know it gets a bad rap and I know the host is better written than this book, but this was so entertaining. I wish I had read it when I was 14 because 14 year old me would have flipped. Like I fangirled over this book, but younger me would have died. I can't believe I waited so long to read it. It's just, it was, I, I love romance. So like this was such a good book like, for my 14 year old soul. That's really all I've got. My name is Caitlin. Thanks for watching. Bye. Side note. For any of you music readers, people who like to read while listening to music, I'm one of those people and I like to find songs that really go with the book. Is B. Miller popular? I love her music, like her whole album, everything she's come out with, I love all of her music. And there's like this song, Dracula. <laughs>